Hello everybody and welcome back to the channel. As you can see I've got the radio back on the bench and I am going to start working on the FM portion of the Elenco radio which some of you have been asking for for a little bit of time and I've kind of put it off because there were some people that were asking for something other than a, a radio video. Well I'm going to do this one a little bit different. Instead of doing one video right after the other on, on each one of the sections, I'll do one section of the radio and then a video on some other topic and then go back to the radio and back and forth. And I think that, that'll keep everybody happy. You know, there's always going to be somebody that says, let's do the radio and, and get it finished. And there's others that say, I'm tired of the radio and just drop it all together. But I'm going to do the FM portion next. So we'll do this the same as we did in the AM section. We'll start by going over some basic FM radio theory and go over the block diagram. And we'll start out with the ratio detector, theory of operation, and then the testing of it. Make sure that it, the theory and the, and the actual practice go hand in hand. And just do each section the same as we had done before. So, with that said, let's go ahead and get started on the FM radio from Elenco. Okay. Before we go to an FM signal, let's take a brief look at AM signals, or amplitude modulation. And on the scope, I have a 600 kilohertz carrier, and you can't see that, but you can see the 1 kilohertz modulation that I have impressed on that 600 kilohertz carrier. If I zoom in, you can now see the 600 kilohertz, and of course the modulation is pretty much flat, at least appears to be so because we're looking at such a small section of it. Now there are a number of advantages to using AM. It's relatively easy to get an AM signal to create one, and it has a pretty good reach distance-wise, particularly in the evenings. But the disadvantage is that it takes just about as much modulating power, just much, about as much power from the modulating signal as the carrier has, or it takes as much, to actually transmit the signal. Not to mention the fact that we have the great possibility that noise is going to be impressed on this signal. If it's amplitude modulated and every time it goes through an area where there might be lightning or electrical noise, it's going to be impressed on this signal and then we're going to end up picking it up on our receivers. Another advantage of using AM is that it uses a relatively small bandwidth. And you can see that on this view of the same signal on the spectrum analyzer. Here's our carrier, and you can see that it's at 600 kilohertz. And if I deviate to the left, there's our lower sideband, it's going to be 100, 1 kilohertz below the carrier, and if I go to the right, we're 1 kilohertz above, at, so we're at 601. Now these are the, some more sidebands, but they are so far down, so if I go do this as a delta, and then go to the next right signal, you'll see that it's 58, almost 60 decibels down from the actual sideband of interest, the upper sideband that we would be that would be desirable to receive. And we don't want this one, but at 60 decibels down, it's not even going to be a very noticeable signal. So we can pretty much ignore it. So the entire band is only this wide with a one kilohertz signal. If I were to make it five kilohertz, it's only going to be five kilohertz difference. So if I make that adjustment on the function generator, you can see I still have my carrier at the center, so here's my peak, it's still at, gonna, at the uh, minus 13 dB, and my left signal is 5 k Hertz down, and my right signal is 5 k Hertz up, and the sidebands now have also moved down an additional 5 k Hertz. So the spectrum for this is going to be pretty small, which is why we can get so many channels into that small AM band. So now let's start talking about FM. So how is volume expressed in an FM signal? 
Volume is expressed by something called the modulation index. And I'd rather think of it as the, the amount we deviate from a point. Uh, it's not the same thing as the rate at which we deviate from a point. Remember, the rate of deviation is the frequency. The amount of deviation is the amplitude. Of course, they don't call it the amount of deviation. They're, they're going to call it the modulation index. And you can see that equation above. And the modulation factor would be equal to the deviation divided by the frequency of the modulating audio tone or whatever it is that you're using. And in this case, the uh, small delta is not the same thing as the deviation rate. They just ran out of letters and decided to reuse them. The higher the modulation index, that MF, the higher the audio tone is that we'll be receiving. So let's use this as an example. So we can see we still have a 1K Hertz tone, so it's expanding and contracting at a 1 Hertz rate. And whatever this signal is, it's a moderate tone. Well, let's say that all of a sudden that the, the music goes up or the speaker uh, the, on, the, on the microphone, he start, his voice starts to go up. What we would see then is a deviation that increases. You can see that it's still changing at a 1 hertz rate. We still have an audio frequency of 1 hertz, but the deviation has gotten quite a bit wider, and that tells us the volume has gone up. So we have two factors that we have to look at. The rate of deviation, that gives us the audio frequency, and the amount of deviation, or the modulation factor, the modulation index, which gives us the volume of the signal. Now the FCC has a limit on the amount of deviation that any radio station can have, and that's going to be plus or minus 75 kHz. So the deviation is 75 kHz, and the highest frequency that is transmitted on FM is 15 kHz. So 75 kHz divided by the 15 kHz gives us a maximum modulation index of 5. So volume has to be something between 0 and 5 as a modulation index in a broadcast station. Now, one other point that I would like to make is that that modulation index, that value that of MF, is actually how far the signal changes in radians. Now, an FM signal is always changing its phase, so we are changing the number of radians that we have, and that's a completely new topic which uh, we can save for another video. Well, why do we use FM? Well, for one thing, it is not necessary to have an audio power as high as the transmitter or the carrier power as it is in FM, so it's a little bit more efficient in that regard. Also, it's immune from noise because we just have a steady signal in amplitude across the top. There might be some noise riding on it, but as far as our receiver is concerned, it doesn't care. And some receivers will actually include a limiter to get rid of what little noise might go through there. The problem with FM is the spectrum. An FM station in the US is going to be able to occupy a spectrum of 150 kilohertz at plus or minus 75 kHz. That's a pretty broad area considering that we only used 10 kHz in AM. It's that broad frequency that causes us to have to put FM into the VHF band of the spectrum. The downside is that we are going to generate tons of harmonics because we have a carrier frequency. Let's say that we're at 100.1 on the radio dial. And if we vary that with everything from 50 hertz to 15 kilohertz, which is the audio range of FM in the US, we can have an infinite number of harmonics. And those infinite number of harmonics are going to give us some ridiculously wide bandwidth. Again, FCC limits it to plus or minus 75 kHz. And you may have heard of something called Carson's Rule, which tells us that the bandwidth that's occupied by an FM channel is going to be the modulation index plus the modulating frequency times 2. 
So at 75 K Hertz for the modulation index. So at 75 K Hertz for the deviation and 15 K Hertz for the audio, we have a total of 90 times two, so that's 180. So we would be, ex we would expect that at plus or minus 90 K Hertz, we have 98.1% of the power. And that's what Carson's rule tells us. We're 98.1% of the power is going to be, and it's an approximation. This is wider than what the FCC allows, so the transmitting station has to do some, some magic to limit it. Let's go ahead and take a look at the spectrum before we all get hypnotized by this, by this signal. This is the spectrum of a FM radio signal. I have a center frequency, which I've marked as the reference point, and it has a actual frequency of 101 megahertz. You can see that here. And you can see all of the sidebands that are generated. Remember AM, we just pretty much had two big sidebands right uh, beside the carrier, and then some smaller sidebands way down. In FM, we've got sidebands all the way across, and these sidebands are important because they convey information that we need to recover. The modulation that I have applied to this FM carrier of 100.1 megahertz is, is 5 kHz, and I've set the deviation to the maximum Deviation index for this is uh, 5, or the modulation index is 5. So this is as loud a signal as you could have at 5 kHz on an FM band. And these are all the signals that are generated. If I bring the FM deviation down, the number of harmonics will go down as well, but this is the maximum. So let's go ahead and find out what this minimum frequency is on either side. And you can see our marker now is about 50 kHz from our center frequency. So our bandwidth is still well within that 80 kHz that we had calculated from Carson's rule. And if I go down in deviation, the amplitude of the speaker is decreasing. So I'm going to go down to 10 kilohertz for my deviation. And you'll see that the number of harmonics goes down as well. If I go up in frequency, and let's say I go to 10 kilohertz, you'll notice that the, that the harmonics spread out a little bit. The point of all of this is that FM just it takes a lot of spectrum, and that's why it's in the VHF band of the spectrum. Now that we have a little bit of FM theory behind us, let's go through the block diagram of the radio. Now it's time to get started on the block diagram. This is the block diagram from the manual, and you'll notice that there is a lot of commonality in terminology between the AM section that we had done earlier and the FM section we're doing now, which is going to make it easier to actually explain what the FM radio does because we've already talked about the concepts. A first AM IF amplifier is going to work the same as the first FM IF amplifier, albeit different frequencies. Same is true for the second here and our audio amp. The differences are found in the way that the signal is demodulated. In this, we're going to use a ratio detector. In this, we used an envelope detector. So there's a few more parts that are needed to get a FM signal out versus just a, a simple AM envelope detector of a, of a diode and a capacitor. And we had automatic gain control in AM in which the amplitude of the signal was limited. So we could cut back on the amplification here. In this case, we have an automatic frequency control because FM is a constantly changing frequency. We want to make sure that our oscillator is at a frequency that's going to be stable so that when it's mixed, we actually get the right signals going into our amplifiers farther down. So we will start by looking at the antenna. It's a simple telescoping antenna and it does a fairly good job. If you want to see what happens if you put a dipole on it, uh, go ahead, it'll work better. The, b the bigger the antenna, the better the sensitivity. So it'll be able to pick up more stations. So our, our signal comes in on the antenna, goes into our FM RF amplifier, and every signal out there in the world comes into this 
RF amplifier. So it has to have some selectivity. It has to be able to pick out the frequency that we are interested in. And that's one of the jobs of this amplifier. This is a tunable section, and also our FM oscillator is a tunable section. So selectivity is started by our FM RF amp. So let's say that we have 100.1 megahertz as our selected frequency. We want to be able to reject everything at, let's say, 100.3, which is the next channel, and 99.9, .9, which is a channel down. That gives us good selectivity. We don't make it, want to make it too tight because then we'll start making the, the signal, the sideband, disappear and we're going to start losing fidelity in our system. The FM RF amplifier also sets the noise floor for the entire system. It sets the signal to noise ratio. Signal to noise ratio can be described as the electrical noise that's generated in the amplifier and then there's signal and then there's noise again. If the noise floor is nice and low it's easy to pick out all of the signals that are there. If the noise floor is very high way up here it's more difficult to pick out these signals and to, to get them demodulated. Uh, it's analogous to uh, a room full of people and if all the people are quiet at one time and somebody drops a, a pin the you know, most of the people are going to hear the pin drop. If everybody starts talking and then they drop the pin again, you're not going to hear it. The noise floor now is too high. And that's the same thing that happens here. If we have a very high noise floor, we have a very poor signal at the output. So we have to make sure that we build this as well as we can. And it's not going to be the greatest because it doesn't have a lot of uh, components to help limit the noise floor and eliminate it. It's just off-the-shelf parts. It works though. It works quite well. Our FM oscillator is going to be set at a frequency 10.7 megahertz higher than our RF amplifier. So this one is going to be 10.7 megahertz higher than whatever the frequency is here. So the frequency that it's going to have as it, at its output is going to be 110.8 megahertz. And it's also going to have the lower end, which would be 99 or 89, 89.4 megahertz. Now notice something about these numbers. They all end in even numbers. All of the U.S. channels and in odd numbers, so this makes it more difficult for us to get an image frequency going through here since there are no channels at 110.8 and 89.4. What happens next is that our 110.8, so we use the upper value, we use high side mixing. We take our 110.8 megahertz and mix it with the input from our RF amplifier at 100.1. So we have those two frequencies, 110.8 and 100.1. And the difference frequency that's going to come out is 10.7 megahertz. So you're going to see this one a lot. Of course, it's going to be varying at the rate of the audio and the deviation value of that audio. The first IF amplifier is going to have a filter in it and it's going to have a your, your typical 3 dB bandpass filter so you're going to have that peak of 10.7 in there and then the frequency that where we get half the power is going to be 3 dB down and that makes sure that we can get all of the, of the intelligence through there as well because remember it's 10.7 plus or minus whatever the modulating value is. Gets amplified through here it's amplified through the second and we get more selectivity from the second FMIF amplifier. Okay. Selectivity here and selectivity here. Once we get through these amplifiers we end up at the FM detector and its job will be to take that varying frequency and turn that back into a nice audio signal of whatever it might be, and pardon my drawings. 
nice audio signal and the audio amplifier will go ahead and amplify that signal. Another feature of an FM radio is a automatic frequency control. We want to be sure that we are going to be at a constant frequency in our FM oscillator. So we get feedback, and this is a, going to be a DC voltage, feedback to this AFC. This is going to be a couple of varactors, and remember varactors are just electrically tunable capacitors. So as the voltage varies, it'll change the frequency of the FM oscillation, and it'll keep that frequency constant at the output, making sure that it doesn't drift off. It wouldn't do us much good if we allowed this FM oscillator to drift off to, let's say, 110.9 megahertz, because at this point, there's no station there for it to, well, it'll still modulate, but the problem is it's going to be out of the IF band and we're not going to get much signal. So our feedback for the, from the FM detector into the automatic frequency control is going to make sure that our FM oscillator stays on point. Some FM radios will add a, another circuit in here called a limiter. And the limiter's job is going to be to remove any variations that we might have in the amplitude of a signal. Also, there is a, again, it's just in some radios, there's a circuit that we would put in here, and it's called the de-emphasis circuit. In FM radio, a lot of the noise that is generated is generated at the higher audio frequencies. So we'll start looking at uh, anything above about um, 2.1 kilohertz. So once the speaker or the music starts to go above 2.1 kilohertz, more noise can be introduced. So they have at the transmitter side a circuit that does pre emphasis. And it actually boosts the higher frequencies up in amplitude. And of course, when we receive it at our radio, we don't want to have you know, a uh, artificially boosted high frequency audio. So they put a circuit in there to get rid of the boost, and that's called a de-emphasis circuit. And this one doesn't have de-emphasis, so no worries on that regard. So that's a fairly brief overview of the block diagram of our FM radio. Let's take a look at the actual FM radio band quickly. The frequency range is from 88 megahertz to 108 megahertz. And because we can only use the odd frequencies, the first one is going to be 88.1 meg, and the last one is going to be 107.9. The frequencies that are assigned by the FCC have a bandwidth of plus or minus 75 kilohertz, which would mean that at 98.3 megahertz, its lower limit for frequency is 98.225. The adjacent frequency of 98.1 also has plus or minus 75k, so its upper frequency would be 98.175. This leaves a 50k hertz guard band between the two channels, and this makes sure that we don't have interference between the two. So we still have the bandwidth, 98.1 plus or minus 75, on each channel, and then we have a 50 hertz, 50 k hertz guard band between the two to make sure that the two do not interfere with one another. So as a brief review of what we had done earlier, the rate of deviation gives you the frequency of the audio. A 100 hertz signal is going to vary the FM at 100 hertz, whereas a 200 hertz signal is going to vary it at 200 hertz, and you can see how the deviation rate has gotten, the values have gotten closer together versus what they are here. So higher deviation rate, higher frequency. So rate of deviation gives you frequency. The amount of deviation, or the volume, or modulation index, gives you how loud a signal is. This is a low modulation index because you can see that when the signals, these are both identical, when the signal gets louder, 
the modulation index spreads farther apart. It's the same rate of change, it's just that the amount of change has gotten greater. And that's it for this video on FM radios. So it's just an introductory section to get us started. So as I had mentioned earlier, it's my intent to do probably something, some other topic in the next video and then come back to the radio and just go back and forth and I think, well, perhaps everybody will be happy with that. I'd like to thank all of you for watching this video and hopefully you'll subscribe to the channel and send me some suggestions on what you would like to see. I've already gotten one on a buck boost converter and I think that might be the next thing that I work on. Once again, I appreciate your time, and until we meet again, take care.